You are listening to the Wool Academy podcast. This is episode number 63. Hello and welcome. My name is Elizabeth Van Delden and once a week we talk to an industry expert from the wool industry supply chain from farm to fashion and beyond, delivering strategies and insights to be successful in wool and showcasing those beautiful stories wool has to tell. Today's guest is Kurt Haselwander. He is the CEO of the Schöller Spinning Group based in Bregenz in Austria. Kurt will tell us all about the fascinating world of Schöller yarns today. Welcome Kurt. I look forward to talking to you today. How are you? Hello Lisa. Thank you. I'm fine. How are you? Awesome. Hello Good. together. Yes. <laughs> well, I know you're very busy. So why don't we just start with our first question and just Get us started by telling us about yourself and the work that you do today. Okay, so my history goes back to the year 1986 uh, when I started to work at Scholler. Um, and so that means more than 31 years now working in the company Scholler and for the company Scholler. Um, and of course, I have a longer tradition. My father already worked in the company, my grandfather, so. Uh, I am the third generation now with more than 120 years experience at Schöller and uh, and today or since um, um, by more than 15 years I'm uh, CEO of the company and since uh, 10, year, 10 years also um, owner of uh, Schöller Spinning Group. Wow, that's an impressive history within a company. And I, and I think your daughter also works at Schella, so your co the legacy is continuing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, and please introduce a little bit your company, Schella Wool, and talk about the different products that you are spinning. Mm -hmm. So the uh, Schella Wool company, which is called correctly Schella Spinning Wool, um, so has a very old uh, uh, company from the tradition, um, and uh, today uh, we are um, working or having a lot of different products in our program. That means uh, uh, we are very diversified um, from uh, normal flat knitting yarn, means fashion, up to uh, technical yarns, uh, functional yarns. Um, a travel tax yarn, which means uh, yarns for the uh, automotive industry, for planes, for trains, bus, and so on, um, and um, also a part of hand knitting yarn. So the whole range um, um, in, our, in our program means we are very diversified uh, in our products. So not all yarns are made of wool. So you also diversified away or from... This, a, mm -hmm. this is a very important issue that uh, uh, the main raw materials from made from, from wool, but of course also blends. Um, wool in combination with, with uh, technical fibers or wool in combination with uh, polyamide, polyacryl and so on, and also polypropylene. But uh, very important always to have uh, a big part of wool inside the yarn. Yes, <laughs> you stay true to the origin, yes. And tell us a little bit um, about the history of Schöller Wool. How did the company well, start? Um, it's a very long history. Schöller Wool was founded in 1849, so more than 170 years. Meanwhile, it was founded in, former, in, in Breslau uh, from, uh, by Leopold Schöller. Um, and um, after that, they... Uh, built some or had some other production sites in uh, Switzerland, in Zurich, in uh, Germany, uh, Eidorf, um, also in Austria, here in Bregenz, Hav and so on. So um, they started to, to conquer Europe, uh, let me say, uh, with their spinning yarn and, and uh, it's coming more or less from the hand knitting. Uh, but after a while, it, they also started to produce the, what we call industrial yarn. Uh, so um, it was a very big company uh, compared to our size now in, in these days. Um, I think they were working more than 5,000 people uh, in this Schiller group. Um, and of course, um, it changed after the years, but um, it was very important to have uh, a lot of production sites at that time. 
And nowadays, um, we know that sadly there aren't that many spinning companies left in Europe. Um, what sort of changes did your company need to make over the time to stay a relevant player in the industry? Of course, it was a very hard time to be open. Um, so it started more or less in the, in the late 80s. Um, um, there were lots of changes because a lot of our customers uh, closed their production because of it was, it was the competition about the price. A uh, lot of knitters or garments were uh, changed to, to uh, production to China and so on. So uh, it was a very difficult time. Um, and uh, we had to find a solution uh, to survive. And uh, that means uh, we started uh, to, to change from, uh, let's say, big quantities, volume, commodity, uh, to be very special. This is, uh, let's say, our strategy. We started to do the last 10 years, changing the last 10 years. Uh, means um, uh, we get rid of uh, all these cheap yarns and very price-wise orientated yarns up to very special things. To be unique was our philosophy uh, and also uh, to, to work more in terms of sustainability, uh, all these things which are very important now in our days. Uh, but we already started this process a lot of years ago and it was very, very good to do it in that way. I think otherwise uh, also we would not exist in these days because we had a long time of very... Uh, let's say, uh, just losing money all the time because it was just a competitive uh, uh, fight in the market with, about the price and so on, and there was no chance for us. Uh, if you, you cannot compare with production in China or other countries, so we had to find another solution, and uh, it worked, obviously. Yeah, that sounds like a great success story. And what would you say are your biggest challenges that you face today? Um, the biggest challenge is marketing uh, and to tell our customers that it's, uh, um, we are not always just speaking about the price. We have to speak about the performance uh, the, of the yarn and so on. Um, and that it's good to, to use uh, these guns because we're innovative, we are sustainable and so on. And of course, uh, you're always faced with uh, the question of the price, and this is uh, not an issue. We are really competitive. This is clear. Uh, but if you want to to buy or to sell uh, huge quantities, you also have to, to speak about price. And this is, let's say, at the moment, uh, the biggest uh, challenge we have. Um, and uh, to bring uh, the knowledge of wool, of performance, of all these things uh, to the to the customer. This is also one thing we are working very hard on it and, and uh, I think very important to, to sell these special products. Okay, that, yeah, that I guess is a challenge of a lot of companies, but mm. thanks for sharing that um, in such detail. And when, like you earlier said, you already then specialized in, in more unique um, yarns. And I guess that's also in the area of technical textiles. Can you talk a little bit, where can we find these technical yarns? Of course, you can find our, what we call, uh, technical yarns in different areas. Um, um, everything that has to do with protection, uh, used for firefighters or uh, gloves and so on. Um, but uh, let's say the most important things are, for example, we are producing we one of the two uh, PBI um, fiber produce, yarn producers in the world. Uh, you know, this PBI fiber is a very high performance in terms of uh, fire resistance, and so they're the highest performance in terms of fire resistance. And uh, uh, there are just two spinners worldwide who allowed to, to uh, produce this yarn. We are one of them. Um, and so, um, if you this, uh, can see um, this very special firefighters, they are wearing this suit. But uh, also, a lot of there's a lot of other other things. Uh, um, everything that has to do with with army, with police, uh, uh, everything has to do with protection. Uh, there you can find these special technical yarns. And I think. Um, you also have a, your yarn in some airplanes, is that true? No, of course, uh, but this is, um, then we uh, speak about uh, the, what we say, 
travel tax yarns um, because uh, these are these yarns that are used uh, for, for airplanes. Um, if you have the chance to fly in the business class with Air Emirates or uh, uh, Cathay or uh, these this, uh, airlines, uh, 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 there's a big chance that you sit on Shola yarn. This is very important. Um, and these yarns mostly uh, uh, nearly 100% wool or blends, uh, 80, 20, 90, 10%, uh, 90% wool, um, because of the performance of the uh, flame uh, retardant, fire resistance, and so on. And of course, also because of the comfort in these places. Um, we all know of the properties of wool, so uh, that's the reason why they are using this uh, woolen yarn instead of leather or the other things. This is uh, very important for us, and of course, there yeah, you can find. But even also, of course, also in, in, in some cars or in the uh, electro car, uh, this uh, special BM, uh, BMW, um, they are also using a blend of uh, wool and polyester uh, in in this electro car because of sustainability and all this uh, thinking. So, um, but this is the area of travel text, what we call travel text yarns. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, that's, sorry, I didn't know the mm. difference there. Mm. And what would you say is your most exciting yarn that you spin in your company? This is a very difficult question. For me, of course, a lot of these yarns are very exciting. Uh, even th there is a lot of wool inside, and this is what we are looking to have always this, this uh, good feeling. So, of course, I'm really a fan of our um, um, very special yarn, which is Use, we are using 100% 14.5 micron wool. That's very soft, very good hand. Um, uh, this is one yarn I really like. Uh, and there, and then in terms of uh, performance, uh, it's our Climber yarn, which is a blend of uh, wool and polypropylene. Um, uh, so you have the combination of, uh, let's say, good feeling and also this uh, climate regulation means uh, if we do some sports or uh, if, it's, if it's warm, uh, you always have a, a good climb on your body. And this is because of the combination of wool and polypropylene. So uh, if you speak about performance yarn, this is a very exciting yarn. Uh, we are very successful with this yarn on the market. Um, and on the other side, this very traditional uh, 100% wool yarns. Um, we have a very huge stock program, and this is what our customers like. And uh, yeah, that's um, yeah. But uh, really, uh, I could bring in a lot of samples when you when you're asking for for exciting yarns. <laughs> um, this is um, yeah, really. Uh, yeah. And of course, everything that has to do also with this uh, EXP treatment, this chlorine-free treatment. Uh, yeah. What what exactly is the EXP treatment? The EXP treatment um, is, um, let's say, um, you can compare it to the traditional superwash Hercule treatment. Means you can uh, wash the wool in, in the machine 40 degrees and so on. Um, and uh, we were, but the problem with this uh, traditional Hercule wool treatment is that you have to use this chlorine. Uh, and we all, a long time tried to find one recipe or one process to avoid. Uh, to use this uh, chlorine. So that's what we did. And uh, uh, a few years ago, uh, we um, had the idea and, and uh, found this process. So now we are able to do this treatment with the same properties, same results as the Hercule treatment, uh, um, um, just without using chlorine. And the second part is um, uh, we are not, uh, after, after this treatment, um, you also putting uh, normally this po uh, um, poly polymer on the on the wool, and this is covered like a, a coat. And we do it just uh, and some, we do some spots um, so that you here really have the the original wool character from everything. Um, and uh, this is the big difference to the, to the traditional Hercule that uh, in with the EXP you have the result, you can wash it in the machine, and you still have 100% wool uh, with the wool character. And I think you were also awarded the Outdoor Industry Award for this 
process yes, in 2013? Yes, especially for this um, invention, we got the, the um, Outdoor Industry Award. Um, and uh, this is, um, yeah, what was, of course, we were very happy because uh, we were the first one uh, who did this special treatment until now. Um, there, of course, there are some maybe um, other uh, companies also trying to, to have this. Uh, but not in the same with the same process. That's uh, uh, it's still a unique way of doing it. Uh, in that way, it's very it's a challenge. It's not uh, it's very very difficult to do it. But of course, now we have a lot of years of experience, um, and uh, really now we can. And our goal is to to change um, more like in the next two three years up to 100 percent to this EXP treatment. Really to have zero AOX to have zero chlorine um, in, in the water. Um, and uh, this is our, let's say, what we do to, to in our, but con concerning to our uh, philosophy in terms of, uh, of um, sustainability, this is very important for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, that That's a great goal to aim for because that certainly will get more and more important. And yeah, we just spoke of the Outdoor Industry Award. Um, and that brings me to the next question that you as a spinning company tend to be not at yarn fairs. You go to sport fairs mm -hmm. and Premier Vision in New York. Um, tell us a little bit about this strategy and how do you see benefits from engaging at these fairs? Well, uh, Lisa, you asked me at the beginning what is the big challenge um, uh, to survive in this in this business and uh, of course, um, we, uh, this question, we were faced with this question a lot of years ago. So we said, okay, uh, we want to be unique. Um, we want, we have to tell the customers um, what is possible uh, because our experience was uh, in, in many times they didn't know what, it, what is possible, what is available. So we had to find to go new, for new ways of marketing. That means uh, one example was well, one thing is we started to produce one car to show what is possible to, to bring into the car. The reason is um, if you show a car at the exhibition, for example, at this uh, um, the Genfer uh, automobile salon or, um, and so on, um, you, have, you, you have the possibility to get in car, which is nearly impossible as a, a simple spinner. But now we found a direct way, and now we can tell them, okay, uh, use this yarn, and you have this performance, do this and this and so on, to, to bring them straight the ideas. And the same, uh, the same way we are doing this, because we are going to this outdoor fairs, to ISPO or in British Garden and so on, uh, we want to show customers uh, what is possible. We want to give them ideas. We want to help them. Uh, we want to just to show a, a yarn cone, it's it's uh, very simple. Much better to to show them uh, sweaters or uh, underwear or uh, some some special uh, technical things and so on. Then this is very helpful and much more helpful than just to show them yarns. So this was the idea behind, and I can tell you this helped us very much to bring our ideas uh, into the market to push it. Um, and uh, that's the reason we are also proceeding in that way. You know, this is uh, yeah. This was the reason why we went, and we're still going to these fairs. So. Yeah, and now you're not alone anymore. There are other spinning companies who have yeah, joined you as well. Always like. This, <laughs> but, uh, at the end of the day, it's also helping because uh, uh, I think it's um, anyway. Of course, we speak about competition and so on, but uh, thanks God, we still have competition. Um, and otherwise, it is a dead industry, and uh, this is very important for us. And uh, most important, always just to be uh, one step before the others. This is the most important thing. We are small, and sometimes uh, it's a fight, David against Goliath. Uh, but I think it makes it um, exciting, and, and, uh, and this is what I like in the business. <laughs> <laughs> Great, yeah, you're a good sportsman then. Mm -hmm. And yeah, another question I wanted to ask you. I noticed that actually a lot of other companies working in wool also have their plants in Czech Republic. So I wanted to ask you if you could give us a little bit of a history why this is actually the case. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, we started to have this uh, spinning mill in Czech Republic. It was more than, I mean, more than 20 years ago. Um, and of course, at that time, uh, we were driven by costs. We had thought about production, productivity, about uh, uh, reduced costs and so on, uh, labor costs. Um, um, so we had to find a way to produce in other countries. Of course, we didn't want to go to China uh, and these places because uh, uh, we want to stay somewhere in Europe. So we were checking and we found in the Czech Republic uh, a few spinning mills. Um, because um, in the Czech Republic, they have a long tradition also of textile uh, tradition. Um, and uh, they have a good stuff. They have the know-how. Um, and especially in our area, it's very, very important to have people with, with, uh, uh, with the knowledge uh, how to do it. It's not uh, like uh, to produce some screws. Um, you know, to, to produce a yarn, you need a lot of knowledge about the uh, uh, the raw material, all these things and so on. Uh, and this is not easy to find, even uh, times changed. Uh, and uh, the textile business was a little bit, let's say, old fashioned and uh, people don't want to work in it. Uh, so um, it's more and more uh, getting difficult to find people. But uh, uh, in the Czech Republic, we still found a lot um, of these uh, workers who now have this, they have the knowledge. Uh, and this was uh, one of the most important reasons to go there. And of course, at that time, it was all the labor costs. Um, and, uh, but there is also a market. Um, and uh, I can tell you, we are really happy to, to, that we did this uh, step to go to Czech Republic. Um, and um, we still, uh, still it, was a good, uh, it was a good decision to do it. So in the past, there was this big wool industry also in Czech Republic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And also some, yeah, as you mentioned, also um, other spinners or some of our competitors uh, went to Czech Republic because there were also these, these big companies with also with 5,000 people working with five, six production sites and so on. And of course, after communism in the 1990s, uh, it changed. They were split. Um, and uh, so people were there. Uh, uh, the, the production sites were there. Of course, we had to do a lot. We had to invest a lot of money uh, to, to refurbish everything from the um, uh, bottom to the top and so on. But anyway, uh, it was worth to do it. And uh, I just can repeat, uh, it was a very good decision. <laughs> okay. and But that brings me also to my next question. You said there were a lot of labor people who were skilled to work in the production plants. But in general, a lot of European manufacturers struggle to find the right employees. Is there mm -hmm. something, I mean, I think you face similar problems also for your site in, in Austria. How can mm -hmm. companies approach this issue? Yeah, this is uh, really uh, one of the biggest challenges we have. Um, we always had, but of course, um, this is uh, let's say our our job uh, to find a way uh, to to get also new workers to get a lot of, of education. Um, we we teach them uh, in in all areas, um, in terms of quality, in terms of uh, uh, technology. Uh, but uh, also, of course, in terms of management, we had to do a lot and uh, to make it also interesting for them to work in our company, um, um, to have these social systems uh, uh, more than just, uh, the, let's say, the, the regular rules. Uh, uh, but uh, you have to do a little bit more. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's not easy, uh, but at the end of the day, it is possible to find people, of course. Um, it's also a question of the salary, and you're faced with uh, a lot of other companies, um, even with the car industry, tech, um, chemical industry, paper industry, and so on. They're also in this in these uh, countries now. But uh, yeah, this is uh, what we have to to solve. It's getting more and more difficult, um, and also uh, more and more difficult to find, uh, let's say, good educated workers, especially in the textile area. Because it is, for of course, for 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 young people, um, it seems to be from the image a little bit old-fashioned industry, the textile industry, spinning and so on. Yeah, of course they like to go to to the IT, um, some IT companies or something like this. 
but anyway, if they start to work, they see, oh, it's not so simple, it's not so easy, and it's very interesting to work there uh, because of the raw material and so on. So this is what we have to, let's say, uh, transfer to give them uh, this knowledge, this know-how, um, and then I think it's possible also to get work. Even if it's in, for example, here in Austria, it's nearly impossible. We, speak, we have to work in a three shift, uh, in three shifts, and, and people don't like it. They like more to work in the office. So, yeah, there are a lot of, uh, let's say, uh, things we have to do. Uh, but, um, yeah, this is our job to solve these problems. <laughs> at yeah. the end of the so, day. you have to become creative again, as yeah. you have been mm -hmm. before. Well, thank you, Kurt, so much for your time. Before we close, um, how can our listeners find out more with, about your company? Where should they go? Yeah, of course, we have also our website. It's um, www.schoeller-wool.com. And, uh, of course, we're also in the Facebook on the Schoeller Spinning Group. So, let's see, that's the easiest way to find us. And, uh, on the other hand, call us, contact us. We are open uh, to speak. I'll visit you at the fairs. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll make okay. sure to link to the website and the Facebook page um, on the show notes so that people can find you very easily and connect mm -hmm. with you. Thank you so much for your time and I wish you lots of success in the future. Thank you, Lisa, for the questions <laughs> and uh, yeah, have a nice time. Yes, you okay. too. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. Hopefully you enjoyed my discussion with Kurt Haselwander. If you want to find out more about Kurt and the Schöller Spinning Group, just head on over to the show notes over at elizabethvandelden.com forward slash 063. Once again, elizabethvandelden.com forward slash 063. One quick tip for you today. I have put together a wool calendar 2018 as a free download on my website. The wool calendar 2018 is a document that includes all relevant wool dates, fairs and events throughout the year 2018 as far as they are already available. This calendar can help you plan your 2018 and get you prepared for your social media activities as well as your travel well in advance. Download the calendar over at elizabethvandelden.com forward slash bool minus industry minus calendar minus 2018. That is indeed a complicated link, so here it is once again. Visit elizabethvandelden.com forward slash bool minus industry minus calendar minus 2018. But I will also make it available on the homepage of my website so that it's much easier to find. Thanks for listening. Talk to you next week and bye for now.